the 1990s brought us some incredible TV, with many shows still enjoyed today. Audiences have developed emotional bonds to these shows, and even the funniest 90s sitcoms had their emotional scenes. Here's a look back at the saddest moments from popular 90s TV shows. Ross and Rachel's off-and-on relationship captivated audiences throughout Friends' lengthy run. Officially getting together in the episode The One with the Prom video, Ross and Rachel dated seriously for a year, until Ross's jealousy over Rachel's new job and co-worker led to their infamous break. Then, when Ross assumed their break really meant broken up, he slept with another woman, breaking Rachel's heart. And in the episode The One with the Morning After, they ended one of the most famous will-they-won't-they they storylines on modern television when Rachel was unable to forgive Ross. Rachel tearfully tells Ross she believed he would never hurt her. Meanwhile, Ross has to face the fact he's permanently altered any relationship they could have, romantic or otherwise. And it's not only heartbreaking for them, but for their other friends eavesdropping on the conversation from another room. After watching two of their best friends find happiness together, they now have to see it all fall apart. Viewers rooting for Ross and Rachel arguably find it the saddest moment of their relationship, while viewers rooting against them may find it just as sad when they learn it's not actually the end. Ross and Rachel eventually ended up together, though many Friends fans now think they were really a terrible match. But whether you were in favor of their relationship or not, the breakup episode is sad to watch. Despite only airing for one season, Freaks and Geeks is even more popular now than when it was actually on the air, and fans mourn its early cancellation. The show's humor is still sharply funny, and some of its most memorable moments were the more emotional ones. One standout example is in the episode Kim Kelly is My Friend. After butting heads with Lindsay, Kim decides to try to get along and invites her to dinner with her family. Lindsay is reluctant, but ultimately agrees. During the dinner scene, Kim's parents continually put her down, making it clear to Lindsay where Kim gets her mean tendencies. When Kim insists a teacher was behaving inappropriately toward her, her mother disregards her, and the conversation turns to a shouting match. Kim's mother tells her that all she does is tramp around and threatens to take Kim's car away. It ends with Kim and Lindsay rushing away in the car as Kim's mother shouts at her to never come back. The scene is necessary to the series' plotlines, bringing much-needed development to Kim's character and putting her previous mistreatment of Lindsay into perspective. But despite the clarity it brings to Kim and how Lindsay sees her, it hurts to watch. Even people who haven't seen The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air probably know what it's about from its wildly popular theme song, in which Will Smith narrates how he ends up living with his aunt and uncle in such a rich neighborhood. What you might not know is that the character of Will was abandoned as a child by his father and raised by his mother alone. Will's father, Lou, returns unexpectedly in the episode Papa's Got a Brand New Excuse. He spends time with Will, asking his forgiveness, and invites Will on a summer road trip. Happy to have his father back, and convinced he has changed, Will is upset by how skeptical his Uncle Phil is about Lou's sudden reappearance. Will and Phil argue, and tensions are high. But at the end of the episode, Lou leaves again, trying to make it out before Will sees him. Sadly, Will arrives just in time, suitcases in hand, to see his dad take off yet again. Afterward, Will tries to brush it off, saying he's made it this far without his father and can continue just fine the same way. But then, Will eventually breaks down with the heartbreaking final line of the episode. How come you don't want me, man? Boy Meets World ran for seven seasons, as viewers watched Corey and his friends go from middle school kids to full-fledged young adults. In the series finale, the series' beloved couple, Corey and Topanga, leave their hometown of Philadelphia for New York City, where Topanga has landed a law internship. Corey is initially freaked out by the move, but eventually comes around to it. The really sad and memorable moment comes when the group must say goodbye to their longtime teacher, Mr. Feeney. The kids had Mr. Feeney as their teacher for their entire adolescence, as he moved with them between grades. As a neighbor to Corey's family, he naturally developed a close bond with Corey and his friends, often providing advice and guidance. And despite insisting he thought of them strictly as students, Mr. Feeney clearly cared about each and every one of them. In the final scene of the series, each of his former students thanks Mr. Feeney personally. Sean thanks him for never giving up on him. Eric says he taught him how to be a good person. Topanga tells him he was like a father to her. And Corey says he'll always be with them. Class dismissed.
Twin Peaks wasn't exactly an uplifting series. The mystery drama followed an FBI investigation into the murder of local high school prom queen Laura Palmer, and inevitably was full of somber moments. One of the most memorable comes just 12 minutes into the first episode as Laura's parents learn of her death. Sarah Palmer, Laura's mother, calls her husband Leland to tell him she doesn't know where Laura is. As Leland tries to calm her down, Sheriff Truman comes to tell him the devastating news. Even before Truman can say anything, Leland begins to put it together, and so does Sarah. As Leland asks if it's about Laura, Truman responds, I'm afraid it is. Leland drops the phone, and Sarah's muffled screams can be heard through it. I don't understand. Twin Peaks has plenty of crazy and intense moments, but this one, rooted in pure human grief, is easily one of the saddest. And the odd detail of Leland and Sarah realizing their daughter is dead before being told about it helps set the dreamlike and bizarre tone of the rest of the series. Despite being a feel-good family comedy, the basic premise of Full House is really pretty sad. After his wife's death, Danny Tanner asks his brother-in-law and a close friend to move in to help him raise his three daughters. Over its eight-season run, the show had many entertaining and hilarious moments and remains a generational touchstone for many. Growing up without a mother, the bonds Danny's daughters form with their uncles Jesse and Joey are some of the strongest and most affecting of the series. And when Jesse gets ready to move out of the house after getting married, of course the girls are emotional about it. Michelle, the youngest, has the hardest time accepting it, and the scene where Jesse says goodbye to her is one of the saddest of the show. It's hard enough when Michelle thinks they're all moving to Jesse's new home and packs up all of her things. It's even more emotional as they exchange goodbye gifts, with Michelle giving Jesse her stuffed pig and Jesse giving her his framed pink bunny, and then exchange their actual goodbyes. But hardest of all is the moment where Michelle is left sadly on her bed when Jesse leaves. Even though her uncle Jesse will be around the house all the time, Michelle's heartbreak in that moment makes the distance as real to the viewer as it is to her. Beverly Hills 90210 was one of the most popular shows of the 90s. The ensemble teen drama followed a group of friends from high school into early adulthood in the wealthy city of Beverly Hills, California. Although frequently campy, the show dealt with plenty of serious topics, from date rape to alcoholism and more. It had plenty of emotional and sensitive moments throughout its run, and one of the saddest had to be the death of Tony shortly after she and Dylan were married. Long before his relationship with Tony had developed, Dylan had planned revenge against Tony's father for his own father's death. And after he married her, Tony's father hired an assassin to kill Dylan in retaliation. But Tony was tragically mistaken for Dylan instead. After hearing of impending trouble, Dylan found Tony dead in her car, shot multiple times by the hitman. Dylan's desperate screams as he held Tony's body were agonizing. Living Single followed six friends through their personal and professional lives in Brooklyn, their antics producing countless hysterical moments. But some of the show's most unforgettable moments were its more serious ones. In the third season, Khadija, the ambitious and hardworking editor of the fictional magazine Flavor, takes a second job as a security guard at a retirement home to pay for improvements at the magazine when it's threatened by a rival publication. Also stressed by her ex-fiancé seeing somebody new, Khadija begins losing sleep and behaving erratically. On her mother's advice, she reluctantly sees a psychiatrist and finally faces her growing depression. With Khadija acting restless and fidgety during their session, her psychiatrist tells her she sees signs of anxiety and possible bipolar depression in her. I'm the happiest person I know. <laughs> As she takes her first step toward facing the pressure she's put herself under and its effects on her mental health, Khadija tries to downplay what she's going through. It's a hard first step to watch, but when she decides to continue therapy at the end of the episode, it's as much a sigh of relief for the audience as it is for Khadija. The X-Files followed FBI special agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully as they worked on unsolved cases involving paranormal activities. Mulder was a believer in the paranormal, while Scully, a medical doctor, sought rational explanations for their findings. The X-Files had its fair share of deaths, but one of the saddest and most shocking was easily the murder of Scully's sister, Melissa. While the Scully sisters had their differences, Dana remained a skeptic, while Melissa was a firm believer in the paranormal. The two sisters deeply cared about one another. This sharpened the tragedy when Melissa was killed in the first episode of the series' third season, especially as Dana was indirectly a reason for her sister Melissa's death. 
Tragically, Melissa entered her sister Dana's apartment while she was out and was mistaken for her by two assassins waiting there. And though Scully eventually caught the man who did it, she never quite found peace. Family Matters chronicled the lives of the Winslows, a black family living in Chicago. At the start of the show, married couple Harriet and Carl Winslow invite Harriet's recently widowed sister, Rachel, and her child to come stay with them and their children. Like other family sitcoms, Family Matters offered warmth and emotion along with comedy, and some of it came in the form of sad and serious topics, as in the episode Good Cop, Bad Cop. In it, the Winslow's oldest child, Eddie, is pulled over for a failed turn signal. His interaction with the cops soon turns ugly, as they make Eddie lie down and cuff him. Dad, the only reason they pulled me over is because I was a black guy in a white neighborhood. Later, Carl confronts the cops who pulled Eddie over, making for a memorable and affecting scene that still rings true today. The older of the two cops claims Eddie fit the profile of a carjacking suspect, but Carl insists this isn't true. He shoots down every excuse, arguing the altercation happened merely because Eddie is a black man. As the older cop storms out, Carl asks the younger one why he likes being a cop. The officer responds that he wants to make a difference when it comes to good guys against the bad guys. Just one problem, son. Your partner is one of the bad guys. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about popular 90s TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.